So what we're going to do in this section is relate electricity and magnetism. Okay, and specifically talk about electromagnetism. So we're going to talk about the magnetic field that's produced from a wire that carries a current, the first thing. And second, we're going to talk about domain theory. Very simple thing to understand. So, this is a simple fact. And the reason I actually wrote the word fact is because it's a fact. It's not a theory. It's not uh, some sort of idea. It's an empirical fact. And the fact is simply put that a current carrying wire produces a magnetic field. That's it. A current carrying wire produces a magnetic field. Now, the way you can see this is by taking your thumb. Everybody take your thumb, please. Okay? Take your stylus. Take your stylus. Okay? I think I took over with those Andrews. Take your stylus. Now, the right hand rule tells you the following. If your stylus is the wire. If the wire is gripped in the right hand with the thumb in the direction of the current, so say the current is flowing through the wire this way. It doesn't matter which way. You can orient it whatever you want. Put your thumb in the direction you would call the current. Be like this, be like this, be like this, whatever you want to call it. Wrap your right fingers like this. Curl them. The direction of curling is the direction of the magnetic field. So this magnetic field would look like this. Okay, it's kind of weird, I know. It's not a north and south pole. It's not a north and south pole. It's just field lines. And take a look at the compass on this diagram here. Follow the way it's pointing. Look at the color in mark every time. See the way it's pointing? Look at the needle. See how the half of it is blue? Follow the needle. The blue half continues to make a circle. That's the circle you're seeing in this diagram on the far right. If you take iron fillings, this is another bonus I give. I gave it last year. This is a lot more difficult than the bonus stuff. If you can get some sort of a wire connected to a battery so that there's a current flowing through it, you probably want to put like a resistor in there too. Some sort of a bulb. This is a lot more difficult than the easy ones. And you're able to get that wire to like cut through a table. So you take a piece of plywood, drill a hole through a piece of plywood, and the wire through the table. If you put iron fillings on the table and you run a current through it, the iron fillings will take this formation on. It will literally make circular, concentric circles, showing the magnetic field that's produced around the wire. Okay, a lot more, a lot more difficult. This is like I did a three-point bonus last year for a test. So if you're really interested and you're good at this stuff, you're welcome to do it. Okay, if you need like supplies or you need like a, a drill or something to use, if you get a piece of plywood or something to bring it in or bring something, the materials in, you can use the drills here with me. It's fine. Okay, but you need to get some sort of wire, connect the wire to your battery, have the battery ready. It's not, it's not an easy one, but you want to do it. But that's the shape it would take on because of this right hand rule. Okay, I have a I'm so sorry. <laughs> sorry, Andrew. When you left, I was using it for an example. Um, all right, so next thing now. This is what gets a little bit interesting now. Okay? We're going to talk about something called a solenoid. And a solenoid is the idea of taking a wire and looping it. Okay, taking a wire and looping it. And what will happen is the following. Actually, does anyone have a charger with them? Can I borrow? It doesn't matter. Thank you. I appreciate it. Alright, so let's say actually let's keep it in this oven. Okay. Alright, so ready? Take a look. Let's say the electrons or the flow of the current is coming out of the outlet. Okay? And let's say that it's returning for some reason into the wall from here. It's not the way it would be, obviously. The signal comes in one problem. We talked about this already. It goes back out the other problem. But let's say hypothetically that this wire actually shouldn't use this energy. This wire has a current coming into it. This is the wire, this is the current coming out of it. Okay, it's hooked up to a source. If you want to do me a favor, just hold these two ends, please. Okay, so current's coming in here, going out here. Does that make sense? So, watch my thumb. I'm going to follow my thumb along the direction of the current. Look at the way you guys need to look up. Look up. Watch my thumb here. Follow the direction of the current, it will move back around, right? Watch my fingers the way they're curled. They're curled coming out of the middle here. You can't see this, look up. Okay, try and move so you can see it. They're curled because they're coming out the middle. 
Now watch what happens. As I rotate around the wire, my fingers are still pointing out the middle of this loop. Notice they're coming out the middle here. Even when I turn, my fingers from the right hand pull are still coming out the middle of the loop. That's physically what you're seeing here. Take your thumb, put it in the direction of the current, this eye right here. The, your fingers are going to point out the middle of the loop. Even when you crawl around like this, let bring your thumb is coming back out of the cage. Your fingers still come up through the middle of this loop. So when you have a wire that has a single loop in it, what you get, what you get is like a temporary magnet, really. If you think about it, if the field is coming out of the middle and it's coming back around, this is like a north pole up top, this is like a south pole on the bottom down here. So this image that you're seeing here, on the left, there's two of them. The field is coming out the top of the loop. Well, that's like a north pole where the magnetic field comes from. The field returns in the bottom of the loop. That's like the south pole. So when you loop a wire by itself, it's the equivalent of making a temporary magnet. Okay, this is called a solenoid. When you do this many times, take a look at the diagram on the right. Follow the current into the wire here. Watch my thumb. Look up, please. Watch my thumb. It's going to go in this direction, right? If my thumb goes in this direction, which way are my fingers going to curl? They're going to curl like this. Even when my thumb goes up like this and curls back around, remember, this is looping. It's looping like this. So my thumb goes up through the wire, back down the wire on the other side, comes back around, back down the wire on the other side. So watch. My fingers are going to curl out like this. No matter what direction I'm in, my fingers are curling out this end. So when you do this with many, many, many loops, the end where the current comes from, right? The end here where the current comes from is the north end because the field is coming out of that. At the end over here, watch. If I follow with my thumb up here, what I would get was this. I would have my thumb showing this direction. My fingers would be pointing like this in this curl. The field is coming back into it in this direction. Over here, the field was coming out. So this is a north end. This is a south end. This is called a solenoid. Okay, a solenoid. Whatever is so funny, please relax. This is a solenoid. Too many of you are giggling. All right. So if we look at this, this actual term, and discuss some things about it, there are some important facts you should jot down. One, summer, relax. As the current, as the current increases, as the current increases, the magnetic field strength increases. Okay, so you supply more current, you get a stronger magnet. You get a stronger magnet from this loop of wire. So you're taking electricity and you're getting magnetism out of it, which is pretty freaking amazing to think about. Okay, I mean it really is. They're completely unrelated it seems, yet a wire carrying current produces a magnetic field, so suddenly we have a man-made magnet here. That's really what this is. Second fact, the magnetic field gets stronger as there are more coils per unit length. The more coils there are per unit length, the stronger the magnet is. So if the current goes up, it gets stronger. If the number of loops goes up, it gets stronger. The third fact, the field inside, inside of the solenoid is much stronger and uniform. Uniform. Let's look at that. Look inside of this. Look at the field lines. They're blue. Look at the somewhat horizontal lines in this diagram. There are a lot of them. They're all compressed in the middle of that magnet. The lines on the outside and the ends, they're spread out much further. If you remember field lines from electrical work, if they're spread out further, it's a weaker signal. The magnetic field inside of this solenoid is much stronger than outside. Okay, much stronger than outside. The magnetic field inside of a solenoid is much stronger than that outside. Now to make what's called an electromagnet, this is a solenoid. An electromagnet is almost the same exact thing, but to make an electromagnet, 
what you do is you take like something metallic, ferromagnetic, something that's like a, a rod or a piece of metal, something l long in length. You're going to take that, place that inside of here. Okay, what it does is it induces a magnetic field on that piece of metal. Think about like uh, a nail. You looped a bunch of wire and you put a nail inside of it. The nail itself becomes a magnet and as a result it's an electromagnet. Okay, that's all that is. So you're taking a nail, you're fixing it inside of a solenoid which induces magnetism on that nail. Now you have a solenoid with a magnet inside of it. So as a result, what happens is you increase the strength of it a lot. Again, the current that's flowing through the wire creates a magnetic field from the solenoid. That magnetic field makes the nail or the metal piece that's in it magnetic itself. So now you have a magnetic nail or magnetic piece of metal rod of some sort with a solenoid outside of it. So it's a magnet within a magnet. Does that make sense? A magnet within a magnet? Good. All right. Um, the last thing for this section is main theory. And this is very simple to understand. Okay? The way structures are made up is that there are what are called domains. And domains have different polarities to them. So this is looking at like a, you know, microscopic, nanoscopic level. So you look at something at a very, very close range. And what you'll notice is that when it's unmagnetized, like for example, this, the material this table is made up of, your shirt, uh, I don't know, what else, this plastic water bottle, they're all unmagnetized. So their magnetic domains will be randomized. There's a bunch of different little small areas that are called domains, and the magnetic pole of them are just at arbitrary locations and angles. So as a result, the whole thing is not magnetized. Now, when something becomes magnetized, for example, the nail that's inside of a solenoid. You place the nail in a solenoid, it makes it a magnet eventually, because it's, in the, in, it's, in, it's being induced in the field of a magnetic field. What happens is, those domains realign themselves. And that's simply all that's the difference. The polarity is changing. Okay, so what you get is these random domains that are random angles. Suddenly, you put it in the presence of a magnetic field, which realigns them. If it's a soft magnetic material, what will probably happen when you remove that other magnet? Instead of staying where they are, what will happen to them? Yeah, they'll go back to where they were, or they'll go back to some arbitrary angle. If it's a hard magnetic material, it would take you a long time to get from here to here, or you need a very strong magnet to make this ferromagnetic material into a magnet, because it's a hard magnetic material. But when you, redu when you remove the magnet from its presence, it will most likely remain the way it is in this magnetized state. Okay, these little arrows are like little mini compasses in the actual material. Um, my notes, I go into a lot of detail about this, and I wrote a whole paragraph. You can read that, but that's really what I'm getting the gist of here. Okay, so you're welcome to take a look at that. That's it, dash two. Okay, so all you have to do for this section is just read. So you have three problems from 20 21 one and just read, looks like two pages here, from 21 two.